Revenge of the Bully, Chapter 14, Taken for a Ride. Rodney, what's gotten into you? Rishi asked as we headed down the hall to lunch. Aren't you aware that in two days you're playing Wyndham and that it's opening night at Mama's? Yeah, I'm pretty aware of that. Isn't it awesome? Why aren't you smiling from ear to ear? You've been moping around all week. You sounded like my mom. You don't have a clue, do you? I finally asked. While the days since my dinner with the windbaggers hadn't been a complete disaster, they hadn't actually been incident-free. For starters, Mrs. Luce Crowd had hosted an afternoon get-together at her house on Tuesday for all the kids she was tutoring. Every G-Men player who ate her chocolate chip cookies wound up getting sick to their stomachs by the time they got home. Today was Thursday, and some were still out. When I said to Hector, see, she's trying to weaken the team, before the big game, he just looked at me and shook his head. A bad batch of cookies, Rodney. It could happen to anyone. Luckily, I hadn't been invited to Mrs. Lutzkraut's little throw-up party. But on Tuesday night, I had an encounter of my own that left me pretty shaken. My dad and I had driven over to the Home Depot in Streetsboro to pick up some paint he needed for my sister's room. While he examined all the colors, I wandered up and down the aisles. Somewhere between kitchen cabinets and kitchen flooring, I got the sense I was being followed. I spun around. For a second, all I saw were two enormous barrels taking up the aisle. Then I realized it was Bart and Bruno. That guy last night in a restaurant said you could beat us, one of them taunted. They both took a step in my direction. I couldn't tell which brother was which, but it didn't really matter. By now, I was pressed against a stainless steel refrigerator with nowhere to run. How about we find out right here how tough you really are? The other twin said, grabbing the front of my shirt and lifting me slightly off the ground. I guess it was the twin who excelled at unnecessary roughness. Listen, fellas, I began. You don't want to do this here, not in aisle nine. We'll just get in trouble. My mind was racing. Say anything to stay alive. It's Saturday's game. We'll have plenty of time to find out who's really tougher. Did I just say that? I felt my feet returning to the floor. Got a deal, grunted twin number one. Yeah, the other one added. That is if we don't see you before then. They both laughed like they were sharing a private joke and high-fived each other before walking off to join their dad. I didn't like that at all. Those two would have lots of chances to crush me on Saturday and make it look like an accident. They had probably been planning it for weeks. Wasn't that enough? Were they going to do something before Saturday's game? And now I had Rishi asking me why I wasn't grinning from ear to ear? I realized he would never understand all the stuff on my mind and decided to just keep it to myself. <laughs> Only kidding, I said as we entered the cafeteria. Everything's great. He stopped and stared at me for a second. He looked a little confused, but then he started laughing. <laughs> you almost got me, Rodney. That was a good one. Hey, I can't wait to tell you the great news I got. Oh, no, not great Rishi news. I was prepared to bolt back down the hall before he could open his mouth, but a voice stopped me, cold. What news? Jessica asked. She was standing behind me with Kayla and Samantha. When Rishi saw them, his big smile stretched even wider. I'm glad you three are or I'm glad you three are here. You got to hear this. I just got a call from ESPN magazine. Did you hear me? ESPN. They want to do a photo shoot and interview with my man Rodney Rathbone. Really? Jessica asked. That's so cool. Samantha added. Even Kayla looked at me with less annoyance than usual. I wished I had shared I could share in the excitement, but I didn't want any additional unjustified appreciation. I wanted to keep out of the spotlight seemed like the world would never let that happen, and Rishi certainly wasn't helping. All right, Rodney, I've cleared up Friday afternoon schedule. I just got off the phone with your father. Wait, what? Can we come to the shoot tomorrow? Jessica asked. Absolutely, Rishi announced. I'm sure I can get the three of you VIP status. There's Josh, I began. We better tell him and the other players. No, Rishi whispered. Not Josh and not Trevor, just you. I was specifically told by ESPN not to bring them to tomorrow's shoot. Won't they notice a bunch of photographers showing up at practice? Rishi smiled. They won't notice because it's not at school. It's out at the ledges. <clears throat> Nelson ledges, I gulped. You got it. They said it would be a really cool place to take the pictures. 
I had heard a lot about Nelson Ledges from my friends. It was pretty close to town, and I could already picture it in my mind. I knew there were paths in the woods that led in and around a number of big rock formations. The place was a huge labyrinth full of caves and cliffs and waterfalls surrounding a lake. I remembered that Slim's mom had never let him go out there. She was afraid he'd fall into one of the ravines. From the sound of it, she was right. When I first moved to Garrettsville last year, I had read that there were many drops in Nelson Ledges over 100 feet, and that visitors had to stay on the marked paths. It sounded like an odd location for a photo shoot. A creamy tingle rose up in my spine. A creepy tingle rose up my spine. It'll be fun, Rodney, Jessica said. You bet it'll be fun, Rishi shouted. It'll be the perfect way to begin the best weekend of your life. With Jessica and Rishi grinning at me, I fought hard to think of an excuse why I couldn't go. Fortunately, good old Kayla quickly put an end to the plans. How are we getting there, Brainiac? The ledges is like five miles away. Don't think for a second that I'm going to ride my bike there and come back in the dark. I could kiss her, I thought, before quickly erasing that image. Rishi smiled. A bike? I have a car coming to school tomorrow to pick us up. Like a limo? Samantha asked. Close, Rishi said. Rodney, what does your dad drive again? The same thing he's driven for years, a Honda. High class, all the way, he grinned. The next day after school, the five of us stood outside the front entrance waiting for my dad to pick us up. I was happy that Jessica's parents had let her come along. It was fine that Samantha was coming too, and Kayla, well, at least Rishi would be happy. My dad's Honda pulled up on time. I opened the back door for Jessica. Several greasy food wrappers tumbled out and the car smelled like french fries. Dad, couldn't you have cleaned out the back seat? My dad turned around. Oh, sorry, son. Don't tell mom. I don't want to listen to her recite my cholesterol counts again. Then spotting Jessica, he added, hi, dear. Hope this is a nicer ride for you than coming back from Camp Why Me. I cringed and wished he hadn't brought up about the time Jessica rode all the way home in silence because she was mad at me. Jessica looked and smiled as if to say, don't worry, I know how dads are. Out loud, she said, hi, Mr. Rathbone, nice to see you. These are my friends, Kayla and Samantha. Nice to see you again, my dad said to the girls. I remember you both from the school dance at Baber Intermediate. Well, pile on in. As he said this, I realized the car would be a little tight for us. I smiled to myself. It would be nice to scrunch in close with Jessica. Rodney, you and Rishi get up here with me. Let the girls have the back. That daydream didn't last long. For the next five minutes, I had Rishi's elbow digging into my ribs. Turns out scrunching wasn't much fun. As we pulled into the deserted ledges parking lot, my chicken sense started tingling. As we pulled into the deserted ledges parking lot, my chicken sense started tingling. Samantha must have realized or must have been having similar thoughts. Shouldn't there be a truck here or something? She asked. Kayla growled, Rishi. As usual, Rishi just smiled. Have no fear. Look. He pointed across the road to the entrance. Some teenager was holding an ESPN sign, except it didn't look very official. We got out anyway, and my father started to join us. What are you doing? I asked him. You didn't think your old man was going to drive off and miss all the excitement, did you? The last thing I needed was my dad directing a bunch of photographers on how to take pictures of me. I said, I was kind of hoping I could handle this on my own. He looked disappointed, but only for a second. No problem, son. Those fries were awfully salty. And I can't seem to get a milkshake out of my mind. Vanilla or chocolate? Oh, it's a tough decision. He started the car. Text me when you want me to pick you up. He called out as the Honda sped off down the quiet wooded road. The brake lights flickered once before he rounded a bank and drove off out of sight. A chilly breeze blew across the parking lot and I couldn't help but shivering. Something sure seemed strange about this photo shoot, but it was too late now. We crossed the road. You work for ESPN, Kayla asked the kid with the sign. What, you are, you look like you're 12 years old. Before the kid could answer, Rishi spoke up. Don't worry, Kayla. The woman I spoke to on the phone sounded real mature. I'm an intern, the kid added defensively. See, I'm holding a clipboard and everything. He looked down as if reading something. Mr. Rathbone? I didn't like this, but just nodded. He pulled out a walkie-talkie. He's here. He's got some friends with him. His walkie-talkie hissed for a second. A voice said, 
All right. Send him up here to get his makeup done, but make sure his friends wait down there with you. I'll send them someone down in five minutes to take them to the uh, interview. Nervous pangs gripped my chest. Wait, my friends can't go with me? The intern kid said, you heard them. They'll be picked up in a few minutes, but I don't see why. Listen, you want to be interviewed or not? I was about to answer or not, but Rishi cut in. Oh, he does. He does. I looked at all three girls. They were, wore worried expressions. I noticed that the woods in back of them were beginning to grow dark as the late afternoon sun dipped below the treetops. I don't want to leave you guys, I said. Nonsense, Rishi insisted. We'll be along in a minute. Go, go. Jessica said, don't feel bad about us. It's not your fault. I'm sure we'll see you in a minute. I had little choice after that but to walk into the woods alone. I paused past a big sign that said, Dangerous Cliffs, stay on marked trails only. Beyond it was a smaller sign that explained the park's trail system. White trails are safest. After that, there were various colors until you came to the red trails. They were the most dangerous. I also noticed with alarm that the trail I was on was called Devil's Hole, which was right by something called Devil's Icebox. Did every trail in this place have to start with the word devil? I continued on heading further into the boulders and cliffs. For a while, I could hear Kayla far below whining to Rishi. So is standing in a parking lot your idea of VIP treatment? As the trail rose higher, however, her words were fainter. I grew more nervous. I couldn't believe I was missing Kayla's complaints. I got to the top of a bluff. Other than the wind rattling through the dry leaves, it was quiet. The sun was definitely getting lower in the sky. I looked around and noticed an ESPN sign pointing down into a ravine. Unfortunately, the sign looked like it had been painted on the back of a pizza box. I strongly considered walking back out and telling everyone I had gotten lost. There was something about this whole setup and the idea of heading down into a dark chasm alone seemed about the worst thing I could do. It also started to dawn on me how strange it was that no one had told me to bring a uniform, let alone a football. Hello? I called out. The only reply was my voice bouncing off the boulders. That's it, I told myself. No way I'm heading down there. Hey, Mr. Rathbone. I turned. The intern guy had followed me up the trail. The interview team interview team wants to know what's keeping you. Uh, explain to me again why I'm being interviewed down there. This is the ledges. It's a famous place in these parts. The producer said it'll make a dramatic backdrop. Now, look, it's my job to see you go in there. So get moving. For the first time, there was a threatening tone to his voice. Being an official coward, I hurried ahead into the gorge. As the trail dipped lower into the chasm, the air grew cooler and wetter. The rock sides were covered with a thick, slimy green moss. I was soon at least 50 feet down in the depths of the chasm. I looked up. There was no way to climb out other than the trail, which I suddenly noticed was marked red. I went over a big tree root and wound around some boulders and under a ledge or two. Every now and then, side passages branched off in different directions. I hoped I hadn't wandered off and gotten lost. You made it, a slick voice suddenly sounded from up ahead. I didn't see anyone, but hearing a voice brought a wave of relief for a moment. Then I recognized the voice and my knees began to quake. How could I have been so dumb? I walked straight into a trap and now found myself at the bottom of a gorge with no means of escape. I had even sent my dad away. On the bright side, I no longer needed to worry about tomorrow's game or mama's grand opening. It seemed pretty unlikely I'd be returning from Nelson Ledges anytime soon. And that is the end of the chapter.